Today we're going to talk about how to identify and write proportions. So more about ratios, a proportion is going to be a, a type of a ratio expression. So we're continuing with ratios today. First thing I want to do though is I want to review something that we talked about when we talked about fractions and that's an equivalent fraction. Remember that equivalent means equal. So those would be fractions that are equal to one another. Okay. So what would be some examples of fractions that express the same value or fractions that are equal to one another? Well, maybe one-half and two-fourths, three-ninths and six-eighteenths, four-fifths and sixteen-twentieths. Those are all the same quantity. One-half is exactly the same as two-fourths, so they're equal, and that's equivalent fractions. Well, if we talk about equivalent ratios, equivalent means equal, so guess what an equivalent ratio is going to be? Exactly, it's going to be ratios that express the same comparison. Ratios that are the same, they have the same value, just like equivalent fractions. Okay, Take a minute, make sure you have this note in your notes, pause if you need to. Okay. So that brings us to what a proportion is. A proportion is going to be how we express or how we show that two ratios are equivalent. Basically, the shortcut definition is we put an equal sign in between the two ratios that are the same. So the definition of a proportion is an equation, that means it's got an equal sign, that says two ratios are equivalent. Okay, two ratios are equivalent. They're the same. And that's a proportion. So some examples of proportions would be 6 fourths is equal to 21 fourteenths. They're the same. Or 8 fifths is equal to 40 20 fifths. Again, they're the same. That's expressing the same ratio. They're equal. Go ahead and pause if you need to. Make sure that your notes are caught up. Wait a minute. Proportions are just equivalent fractions. That's all we're talking about when we're talking about proportions. So if you understand what equivalent fractions are, you understand what a proportion is. Okay, so how are we going to tell if ratios are proportional? There's going to be two things that we need to do to tell if two ratios are proportional. First thing we're going to do is we're going to reduce each proportion to its simplest form. So like reducing a fraction, simplifying a fraction, we're going to simplify the ratio. After we simplify the ratios, we're going to compare them to see if they're the same. If after you simplify, you end up with the exact same ratio, then they're proportional, they're equal. If after you simplify, they're not exactly the same, then they're not proportional. Take a minute, make sure you have this in your notes before we go on to our example. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of examples. In our first example, we want to look at 2 sevenths and 6 twenty-firsts, and we want to tell if these are proportional or not proportional. So we're going to look at our first fraction, our 2 sevenths. What's well, already in simplest form? We don't have to do anything to that one. We cannot reduce that fraction at all. So let's go on to our next fraction, 6 twenty-firsts. We need to think about how we can simplify this fraction. What if I divide by 3? I can divide 6 by 3, I can divide 21 by 3. When I do that, I end up with a 2 on the top and a 7 on the bottom. So now I need to see if my first ratio and my second ratio are equal. So 2 sevenths is equal to 2 sevenths, they're both the same now. So I'm going to say that yes, they are proportional. 
pause if you need to. Make sure you have this example written down. We're going to do one more. Okay, let's look at 8 24ths and 6 20ths. Again, the first thing I want to do is I want to simplify my 8 24ths. Well, I can divide both of them by 8. When I divide by 8, I'm going to end up with a 1 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. So that one simplifies to 1 third. Let's take a look at the next one. I've got 6 and 20. I can divide both of these by 2. That's going to be my greatest common factor. When I do that, I can simplify to 3 tenths. Now I need to look and see whether or not these are equal now. 1 third is not equal to 3 tenths. So how I'm going to express that, I'm going to draw the equal sign, but then I'm going to put a line through it to show that we are not equal. Okay? So these are not proportional. Pause if you need to. Make sure that you have this written in your notes. Now I want you to try these two. Pause, take some time to work these out, and we'll be back to check your answers. All right, let's go ahead and check these. I've got two fourths. I'm going to simplify by dividing by two, and that's going to give me one half. On my next fraction, three sixths, I'm going to divide by three. When I divide by three, that's going to simplify to one half. So are these proportional? One half is equal to one half, so yes, they are. Let's take a look at the next one, 24 over 48. I can divide top and bottom by 24. When I do that, I end up with one half again. So let's move on to my second fraction, my second ratio, 16 over 36. I can divide top and bottom by four on this one. That's my greatest common factor. When I do that, I end up with four ninths. Now, four ninths and one half are not equal. So these are not proportional. If you made a mistake, let's go back and take time to correct it. Pause if you need to. Okay, so what if we have to make our own equivalent fractions? What if we've got to write a proportion on our own? There's two things that we can do, two options that we have to write our own proportion. The first thing that I can do is to multiply. I can multiply both parts of the ratio, the top and the bottom, by the same number. So that's option one. Multiply top and bottom by the same number. Or my second option is to divide the top and bottom by the same number. So divide both parts of the ratio by the same number. If you multiply top and bottom by the same number or divide top and bottom by the same number, you're going to end up with an equivalent ratio and you'll be able to write your proportion. Go ahead and pause if you need to. Make sure you have this in your notes. And let's take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, my first example is 8 fourteenths. Let's go ahead and find an equivalent fraction by multiplying on this one. So I'm going to choose to multiply by 20. You can pick any number you want. You could pick 10, 15, 8, 7, whatever you like. But I picked 20. So I'm going to multiply 8 by 20, and then I'll multiply 14 by 20. And that gives me 160 over 28. I'll write my proportion by saying 8 fourteenths is equal to 160 over 280. My next example is 4 eighteenths. Let's go ahead and divide this one to see how that works. So I'll divide top and bottom by 2. When I do that, I end up with 2 ninths as my equivalent ratio. 
I'll say 4 18 is equal to 2 9 and that's my proportion. Make sure you have these examples written down. Pause if you need to. You try these. Find an equivalent ratio and write a proportion. Pause if you need to, and we'll come back and check your answers. Okay, your answers may not match mine on these, but as long as you get the idea of either multiplying or dividing by the exact same number, your answer's probably correct. But I'm just going to do, um, do these, pick a number. On the first one, I'm going to pick 10 to multiply by. When I do that, I get 30 over 50. You may have picked a different number to multiply by. That's okay. My proportion would be 3 fifths is equal to 30 over 50. On the second one, I'm going to choose to divide. You may have chosen to multiply, and that's okay. Your answer might be a little bit different. When I divide by 4, I get 7 fourths. So my proportion would be 28 over 16 equals 7 fourths. Again, you may have picked totally different numbers, and that's okay as long as we're multiplying or dividing by the same thing on the top and the bottom. Thanks for watching today. Today's video was brought to you by the letter P for proportion. Bye!